Because I'm thinking a lot of people would look at the job that you used to do mm. and think that was a horrible job. Like what attracted you to that in the first place? Was there, I'm, sh I'm sure there had to be a part of it you enjoyed. Well, it was fascinating. I mean, it's a terrible thing that <laughs> Scotland spent a lot of money training me to be a doctor, to look after people. And I decided after a while, I don't really think I like this very much. I'm not very good with live patients. Because I used to be thinking, Jesus, here they come again. And my worst nightmare would be to be a GP. And on a Monday morning, you open your door and you think, oh, Jesus, they've all come back again. <laughs> Close the door, <laughs> go, go and hide in a corner. <clears throat> so I, I transitioned into laboratory science and then I just discovered forensic pathology. And I thought, well, this is fascinating. Gruesome, but fascinating. And so when you do a gruesome job, do you go to work with a smile on your face looking forward to getting that job done? Yeah. That, well, you, well, you have to. I mean, you can't be half-hearted about it. You have to just put your whole self into it. And you don't have to be solemn to be serious. And sometimes you have to be a bit light-hearted when things are really pretty dire. Sometimes a little bit of humour, you know, lightens the moods and let, gets other people working along with it. I signed up for this. I'm, I knew that I was going to be dealing with death every day. You know, it doesn't come as a big shock to me. But there were just young guards who... You know, straight out of college, and suddenly they're faced with a with a body, and they've probably not even seen their granny dead. You know, they, so they, it was it was really quite difficult for them. So you always have to keep an eye on them, and then you know, just make a few quips here and there, just to sort of lighten the mood. So that's how you get through the job when you're doing it, mm -hmm. and then when you retire, does your mind ever go back to any of those cases that you worked on? Only in a professional capacity, if I'm called back to go to court or to an inquest, I don't dwell on the past. What's done is done. When I worked, I gave it my all, and hopefully I did a pretty good job. But that was then, and that's, I've, I've finished with that. I can't change the past. So, I, no point even trying. So I just move on to the next thing. There's so many people tonight thinking of the family of Ashley Murphy. And it's the end of a case, but for her family, it's the start of a lifetime without her. And you have worked on so many tragedies and each one is a tragedy and each mm -hmm. one has the heartbreak left behind. Did you take any solace when you were doing the job of bringing some of these people to justice or did you have to separate that from your job? I always thought of my job was to do the best I could for the family. I couldn't do anything for the deceased person. It's too late for that. But by doing my job well, I could help the guards, the DPP, get a case into court. What happened thereafter? Nothing to do with me, and I, I, I had no say in that. But very often afterwards, families would ask to speak to me because they weren't allowed access to me up until then. Because you have to, I suppose, it's difficult for the guardy trying to keep a lot of things under wraps before it gets to court. So very often, um, the families would say, can I have a, a quick word with you? Uh, and I'm sure that was much harder than doing the first part of the job. Oh, because then I could allow myself to be emotional because I had done my job. I, and that was, that was all, it was in, literally in black and white. That couldn't be changed. But then I could, just as any human, you see the suffering, you think, oh. And sometimes, I, like what you're saying today, I think, how are you coping? How do you go on day to day? It's so hard for them. It's hard for, for so many families that have to go through that. For, for someone like you, you worked on cases that get justice and you worked on cases that were unsolved. Do those ones hurt more? That, that process had nothing to do with me. I don't know why they were, I, I don't know why a case gets to court and it doesn't go through. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I've always said to the families, I hope you get the result you're looking for. Because people, 
when I think about it, if it's my family, I would be so angry and wanting revenge. But some people don't. They maybe just want to get the information. They want to know what happened. People, people want the truth. And they want the truth. And in the olden days, um, people kind of sugarcoated it and thought, well, you don't really need to know all the ins and outs and the details. But I always thought, no, I can't lie to these people. I've got to tell them. And it's hard. But I think then afterwards they go away. And I always say to them, look, now look I'm going to speak to you. Either write down what I'm saying or go away and think about it and write down some more questions and come back and see me again. And, I, and hopefully, in some way, I helped a lot of these people. And I'm sure you did. You know, it sounds like it's, it sounds like it's all consuming. Oh, as I say, you, 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 you know, you, you sign up and it's 24 seven. You know, Christmas Day, birthdays, anniversaries, I would be toddling off. But that's what I had to do. And have you got your life back now? Because that idea of you're retired, but there are cases that you have worked on mm. that are still going to be processed. And so you can't really say goodbye to it, can you? No, I can't. Um, I mean, I was in court last week and that was a case from five or six years ago. So... The justice system is slow and then you have appeals and retrials and so you're always coming back and forward. What are the biggest sacrifices of doing that job? Is it, is it not seeing the family? Is it not seeing your friends? I mean, your daughter said a thing which is, <laughs> Mom, you don't have any friends. That's true. It must be quite hard <laughs> to have friends because the, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> and that's the problem. Because uh, obviously people are curious. So you, you can't allow yourself to get drawn into conversations. So you have to make a conscious decision. I'm, I'm a great believer that a woman can do anything they want to do. You can be an astronaut, you can be a doctor, you can be whatever you want to be. But there are sacrifices. And I decided that it was going to be job and family and I would just have to ditch friends. So for, I'm signing up now though. <laughs> I'm looking for friends. 